million dollars worth of game. We love all our supporters out there for rocking with us for so many years. We got everything going on wherever you like. Gilly on Sports, Where's Wallow, Adventures, whatever it is. What you need to do right now, I need you to push the subscribe button, but also share, like, go down below, get some merch. Share, like, get some merch, subscribe. We got more to come. Subscribe right now. Million dollars worth of game. Ah. You're now tuned into me, 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 me. Million dollars worth of game. We got our brother on here today, Kevin Gates, man. It's going down, man. New album coming out. Just in uh, great spirit. Out here doing some good stuff, man. How you feeling, brother? I feel good. Mm. What's been going on? How you been How you been living, man? Um, I just had a, a listening party. Okay. I'm still kind of speechless from the listening party because they surprised me. Okay. And um, I guess when you come from not being celebrated, when somebody do try to celebrate you, you shun it. So this is my first time allowing myself to be celebrated. And it was it was beautiful. Like I was surrounded by the people that really love me for real. And that, that appreciate my growth and that support my growth and just they salute my transition. It was it was beautiful. It got emotional for me because I ain't never had experienced that kind of love. And then like the gifts that I had received, like I had somebody give me something that was that words can't describe. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was beautiful. Did you think you was gonna be here today? Meaning, not not on the interview, not on that. You know, coming out of Louisiana, coming up in the struggle, the streets, the ups and downs of everything that we go through in the hood. Did you think you'll be here today? No, sir. Okay. No, I had accepted it. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna run the money up, and um, I kind of took a gladiator approach, which. In our lives, we kind of look at it as heroic in nature because y'all just live off the money of it and I'm gonna sacrifice myself. Either I'm gonna die or do a life sentence because there's not really that many options coming from where we come from. And I ain't just speaking of Louisiana, I'm speaking of uh, impoverished environments. When you come up out of poverty, that's, that's a beautiful thing. And I had to overcome survivor's guilt also because you mm. want to take everybody with you. Mm. And sometimes you feel like you only as good as your ability, your ability to provide or your ability to do, especially being a man. Like, sometimes you feel guilty even doing something for yourself. When reality is everybody can't go, man. Somebody, somebody's going to have to get thrown off the ship. <laughs> and um, it, it, it's painful because, you know, you sit in prison, I, like we both sat in prison, and you had these ideas of who you want to become. And when that, that light come on in yourself, you say, I'm done with this shit. You know, you you be like, you know what? I'm done all eating off these trades. I'm done sleeping in the cell, this hard ass bunk. I'm done having to call my peoples and can't be there for them. And your light come on. And you say, when I go home, it's on. I'm gonna turn it up. You do that, but sometimes it's not enough for everybody. And you know, uh, me personally, you know, because I know you done went through it. Everybody they see success go to it. It come to a part where it be like, you can't even celebrate you without somebody asking for something. <laughs> no, straight up. You can't even celebrate you and the people that you might love or the people that might be on your team that's really putting the work in. You want to see how somebody you love really feel about you? Tell them no. Mm. I know. <laughs> Tell them no. Well, that, that's going to bring it out of them. Huh? <laughs> that's like spitting in somebody's face where we from. You know, it's equivalent to that. So, you know, you get the success and it just be like, damn. like They'll, can, they'll kill you. About no. They'll kill you. They'll stay well. And it's not that, it's not when they look at you, they not looking at you seeing everything you went through and what you became. When they look at you, they see everything that they're not. Mm -hmm. <sighs> when I look at you, I see everything that I'm not. Yeah. And when you, they look everything at that I'm not. I don't have nothing to live for, nothing to lose. And if you tell me no, it's like, it's like because, it's because it's like if if, if I know you, if you if you if you know me, you owe me. Mm -hmm. Tighter, man. If you know me, you owe me. Mm -hmm. And because I look at you and see that you everything that I'm not, I kill you. Mm -hmm. They start looking at everything that you got as well, though. I kill you, so and they say shit like, man, he could give me that. That ain't nothing to him. Oh, they count in your pocket. Yeah, they. Oh, yeah. they. What yeah. they? Shit. I deal with that a lot too. <laughs> and, and and it's the point of, you know, getting you out the way or you falling. I don't have to be accountability for my lack of or my lack of discipline or my lack of hustle 
or, you know, or my lack of accountability. See, that accountability is deep. It's extremely deep, you yeah. know. So it'll be just that. And it's, and it's sad, man. You know, it's real sad because sometimes we got to let go of people that we really love and we thought loved us. You know, mm-hmm. that's what's so deep about it, you know. Kev, yeah, when did you become the workout junkie, man? Because mm. you be going in. I worked out before I came here. You be going. You just showed me some shit. On. I got to start learning how that's to breathe. My, uh, that's my drug of choice. Yeah. Because... It make me feel good. It make me cognitive before I go do anything. And it's, it it allowed me to raise my frequency. Yeah. Like I got a frequency chart on my phone and it show like the different levels of frequency that you operating out of. Like on, on my frequency chart, desire is a lower frequency than anger. Like we was just talking about wanting what somebody else have, desire. Mm-hmm. That's a vibrating at a lower frequency than even anger, even getting mad. And Every day I get up and I, I raise my frequency because it make me feel good. Because mm-hmm. I used to do drugs. I used to drink lean. I used to smoke weed. I used to do those things. But I don't believe in rehab. Rehab is for quitters. Mm-hmm. I don't do rehab. Mm-hmm. I just replace those habits with healthier habits. Mm-hmm. And how was it How was it hard? Was it hard for you to kick that? Or was it? No. You just said You know who made me, um, who made me really stop drinking, sir? Who? Oh. I ain't never told nobody this. This is my first time saying this. Gucci, man. Shout out to Gucci. He told me, Kevin, if you think about it, it ain't nothing but cough syrup. That's what he told me. He, <laughs> Gucci man made me stop drinking syrup. And I said, you right. <laughs> <laughs> you said, I'm addicted to f- night quill. <laughs> that's, that's, who, that's who made me stop drinking syrup. Because y'all was in the studio just? Nuh-uh. We, I used to call him every morning. I used to be like, good morning, CEO. He would be like, good morning, CEO. And... And I used to, we used to like share like health tips with each other, mm-hmm. but he was already together. You know what I'm saying? He had already been on his fitness journey before me. So he was like, I don't drink syrup. I don't do none of that shit no more. I was like, all right. He said, if you think about it, it ain't nothing but cough syrup. Damn. And I was like, damn, you right. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Cause, cause you know, like your whole aura is that, you know, you always been a confident you always been a new who, who knew who you was. Mm-hmm. Did the weightlifting journey add any confidence to your sh-? I'm through the roof now. But I'm still kind of shy when I get on stage. Like the first two, three songs, I'll be kind of shy. And I think it's beautiful because I look at them, when I look at myself, I'll be like, he vulnerable. And other people see it too. And I get on it, like before I sing my, my first song, I'll be like, y'all give me a minute, let me gather myself. I'm so nervous. Because I be nervous. And it's not nervous out of fear. It's just nervous because I care. I don't want to make a mistake. I want whatever I deliver you to be perfect. Right. Mm-hmm. So I be kind of nervous a little bit. Now, so, I ask that because, you know, from a person from the outside looking in, they'll look at somebody like you and be like, feel like, you know, you always had all the confidence. You always get, just getting in shape ain't do nothing for your confidence. It just, yeah. just got you in shape. But they all yeah. know that you human too. You got the, you you got all ripped up on them, and now you're coming out. I, I, I I'm, see. I ain't, I'm gonna be honest. Um, I see. You, now bro. when I walk in a room, it's a different type of confidence. Yeah, it's a different type of level of self respect because I know I did what other people didn't do before I walked in the room. You know, I honored the commitments that I made to myself and. Discipline and self restraint equals self respect, and self respect equals self confidence. So if I don't work out and I walk in a room, I'm gonna feel a little off because mm-hmm. I didn't honor the commitments I made to myself. But when I honor the commitments I made to myself, I'm confident. I'm through the roof because I did what I was supposed to do. How long it took you before you got addicted to it? Uh, so I know I, it, at first soon, when you started mm-hmm. off, it was like ah, my legs. My arms, that shit be killing you. No, but I was. I had, a ang- I had a, a frustration. I was angry when I went in there because I don't know if you ever heard me tell you when I was fat and I had titties, I was holding that baby and that baby was trying to suck my titty and everybody <laughs> laughed at me. <laughs> okay. I needed that. And when they laughed at me, I was able to be naked. <laughs> Yo, yeah. They saw, I, I was able to, I was able for, I couldn't hide. I couldn't hide behind the. Fuck working out, bitch. I'm trap house sexy. I'm on the block sexy. Or uh, I used to walk in the room and point out everybody else's flaws, so couldn't nobody see me. That fucked you up, man. When everybody, cause you know, especially when you're a gangster, 
you know, when everybody laughing, they trying to like secretly laugh, but you seeing everything. You and they peep that. <laughs> you like oh, and then I'm like, man, he'll take the baby. The one I said take the baby, <laughs> everybody bust out laughing like, kiki, kiki, kiki. and I felt so small. Yeah, and I'm I was sorry, like, yeah. I was I like, can't secretly with. laugh. No, but see, this the twist though. This the thing. <laughs> I needed that though. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, Shit. in our they culture, they turn me into a monster. They turn you into yeah. a monster. That day, the baby yeah, tried crazy. sucking their titties, turned into a yeah. monster. In, in our in our culture, <laughs> we're taught we're taught not to feel. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, bro. I mean, he, he, just, he making me laugh. Yeah, <laughs> you know how you be in the class? Hey, he making me laugh. I ain't trying to laugh. He making oh, me shit. laugh. <laughs> no, oh, shit. So, God. So, so what's crazy is that one one of the, in the ghetto we're taught not to feel. We 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 taught to you know we dehumanize ourselves by not feeling, not being trans, not being vulnerable. When did you get to the stage where you know to the point <coughs> of I'm gonna just be me? I'm express how I'm feeling, wherever I'm hurt, wherever I'm sad, because you, you you put that out there, you know, and we see you always doing that. When did you become 20, comfortable with? Twenty twenty, I think it was twenty twenty two, like right before I had did the when we was in Puerto Rico, twenty twenty one, twenty twenty one. That's when I made the song Fairy Tale, mm -hmm. and I talked about what I had been through, and I think I cried after I did the song. My my manager. Who is not my manager was my engineer. After I made that song, I cried for like maybe two weeks straight, just uncontrollably, in front of everybody. And then I went on the Mike Tyson interview and I talked about what I had been through and come to find and I love my shout out to Mike Tyson. I love that brother. Yes. And then come to find out he had been through the same thing I had been through. And he was like, this would turn me into a monster. And then I noticed when I started going to gyms after that interview. People just walk up to me and hug me and tell me thank you for your transparency. Like I've been like so many men walk up and say I've been through the same thing. This would mm -hmm. this would turn me into a monster. And I was like, it really do take more courage to be vulnerable than it do to walk around being a tough guy. Cause we can all see through the tougher side that you're really hurting on the inside. Yeah, right. You really hurting. You really need to. You can hug, stop pretending. Mm -hmm. Like we all can see you. Right. And. I noticed that once I let the world really see me, like people had a greater level of love and respect and admiration for me. And I say that's one of the only things I ever really wanted as an artist, to be appreciated in my entirety. Mm -hmm. Not just you rap good, you sing good, you make good songs, but like people love me more than my music now. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful thing. And is I'm helping other people heal by helping myself heal. That's what the album was really about, the ceremony. It was about reconnecting with myself because nothing external adds value. And I did learn to love again the stranger that was once myself. Because it started, I, could, I had to go back to when I was in my childhood. Like if I wanted the girl, I had to get the money in the car. Mm -hmm. You know, why mm -hmm. did you want the money? I, I told everybody, all I ever wanted was money, a car, a yeah. girlfriend, and a gun. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause that's that what was, the dude that had the pretty girl had. Yeah. Yep. I never saw his house. I don't even know if he got a house. Right. Mm -hmm. I just want the money, the car, a girlfriend, and a gun. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see when we're younger. Yeah. And it's always something external. Once I get this, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna attract this. Or once I do this to myself, I'm gonna go to this level. And once I do this, I'm gonna go to that level. It's always external things. But those things don't add value. It's what's internal. It's what adds value. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm at with it right now. How did you get to the point of, you know, when we from the ghetto, you know, people pop some stuff or they say something we don't like, we want to fuck them up. We want to go right at it. We want to be aggressive. When did you, you know, you was able to transform and say, you know what, it ain't that deep. Like, I got to see above this situation. I had to realize what, what, what was I operating from. I'm operating out of fear. Mm -hmm. I come in jail, we fight till the police come break it up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cause you ain't gonna let this man recover for fear of him recovering and getting the upper hand. How come in the streets if when 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 fighting was out the window, how come I'm a, when I put it on him, I'm gonna make sure I dog him. I'm gonna do him dirty. Why? Cause you have a fear of him shaking shaking back and getting his lick back. All that's fear. We operate out of fear. Like that, that's just that's how I was operating out of fear. I wasn't operating out of love. Now when I look at somebody, I could see myself in that person. 
I can see different versions of myself. So I'm not threatened by nobody, really, to be honest with you, because I look at them with love. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just it's just different. It's the level that we operate out of. Like, I notice we can go stand in the trenches right now, and as soon as we see some people we don't know, our face going to get straight stiff because we just trying to be that way. Mm-hmm. We you trying know, to be that way. It's, it's, it's kind of like with us, you know, we we go everywhere. You know what I mean? I was just at the MGM in Detroit, and all all the niggas in the casino saying, "Man, Gilly in here. He ain't got no security with him." Man, respect, respect, respect. You I never, lead, you I lead never, with respect. You don't never have no security right. with you. I lead with respect. So if I'm leading with respect, then what are we talking about? And then I only fear God. So if something got to go down, then it got to go down. But I don't lead with disrespect. I lead with respect. I'm a respectful n- yes, So, sir. So most of the times when you're not scary and you're respectful, motherfuckers going to show you the same respect that you're giving out. Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game yes. Business Spotlight. Listen, right here, this is where we highlight people that's giving you information so you get up off that couch, mm. so you get up off your ass, mm. so you can stop playing games. Because mm. a lot of people is out here playing games. Uh-huh. They're blaming the man, they're blaming society, they're mm. blaming their ex. they blaming everybody except themselves. They're not looking in the mirror. Stop lying in the mirror. Mm. When you're going to stop lying in the mirror and start mm-hmm. getting your blessings, because you talking to? Blessings going to give you some blessings. You're you know what I'm saying? You. Yes. Yeah, I'm talking yes. to you right there. I'm you talking to right the person right there. Right there you keep playing games. Uh-huh. Get up off your ass and get you this be game. A middle room warrior. Yeah. All in your middle, all in your mind. I'm a middle room. Today, we're going to take you out of the middle room, and we're going to connect you with the middle man, because she's going to connect you with some game. I'm talking about what Blessing's going to do here today. She's going to give you a free ebook from the rip. You ain't never got to talk to her again. You ain't never got to do nothing. All you want to do is text her. She's going to give you a free. You ain't got to spend no money with it. You ain't got to say nothing to her. You understand? You can take the information, give it to somebody else, do mm. whatever you want to do with it. Mm. Listen, I'm talking about some real life blessings. Today mm-hmm. is your day to get some blessings. If you want some blessing from Blessing. That's the game. You know what I mean? We talking about Preach. today. Wait, hold we on. Got, don't say that. <laughs> that sounds a little different. You know niggas is freaky. Man, man I ain't got I ain't worried <laughs> about none of that. You tell me you want some blessings. Some, some blessings. blessings. Yeah, but, it, but it's, over, she ready to like, give some blessings. She ready to give up some blessings. You know what I mean? So we talking about blessings <laughs> McCoy Thompson. And listen, what's important today is she's going to take you from being a middle room warrior mm. and give you the game of how she's doing some middleman work. And you can mm. be a middleman and get some game too. Mm. And what you need to do first, I'm telling you first, is all you need to do is text middleman at 833-232. 9941-833-232-9941. And she's going to give you the free how mm. to make 10K in 30 days with accident referrals. What you're doing, all you're doing is, like, for instance, like, every day I deal with him, he's at just an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> I can make money off him every day Period. referring him to a lawyer or whatever, just referring him to the people that need to be referred to so he gets some, because he's just an accident. He had trip and fall. He might be going to the bathroom, pee on his side. I don't know. He's just always doing some stuff that's accident worthy. So, she going she gonna to get you a lot of money. I already hooked it up with I'm going to get 50% of whatever you get because she know what she's going to do. Now, <laughs> what you need to do right now, like I said, you're going to text that and she's going to give you that, that free ebook, How to Make 10K in 30 Days with Accident Referrals. Now, tell me how do we do this? How do we do this, Blessing? So this is, can, can I introduce myself or do just, your thing. just jump in? Jump in. Okay. So I just want to say, hey, billionaires, I'm blessing your accident blessing. What I do is help at car accident victims when they are in a car accident. I do connect them to attorneys. I do connect them to medical providers and I love what I do because I am the middleman and I did my research and I actually do make more money than most attorneys do. Now, I just wanted to put that out there mm-hmm. because I have been kind of timid about teaching what it is that I do. I've been doing this now for 15 years and on my own for five and I've made millions of dollars by doing so. So I just want to show other people that it's simple mm-hmm. and that they can also do it too. So that's why we're here today. I just want to give a brief introduction to myself. And how I do this is number one, by telling everybody what it is that I do. I live in Georgia. Mm-hmm. So in Georgia, we have 20% more accidents than the whole United States. Why? Because we're distracted. Because it's niggas on niggas. It's niggas on niggas. And okay. we're distracted and we're not paying attention and we're texting while we're driving and accidents are just happening all of the time. Mm. And I speak to accident victims that were never going to call anybody. They were, going, they were going to never pursue their personal injury settlement if a accident blessing did not call them and let them know what their rights and options were. Mm. Those people would have just stayed hurt and got no money for that. Mm. And so we spend thousands of dollars on um, car insurance. Like I'm 36 years old. Mm-hmm. I've been paying for car insurance since I was 19 years old. And they're just keeping my money. So whenever I'm in an accident, it's my due diligence to file that claim and get my money back. That's what I pay my insurance for. So I'm just showing people, get your money back. That's what you paid your insurance for. Mm. So so the whole thing is like, at the end of the day, you saying, 
All these accidents that happen, they happen. Now, an accident that happened today. You're going to find this person that might walk away that don't even look at it like they could be getting some money from Yeah, this, this is really a, a blessing. I didn't cause the accident, but since you were in it, you need to be blessed by this. And, you, and you're and you going to help people find the people that was in it, even though they, like, they don't even know what's going on, but you can help them find them. Yeah. So even, so what I do is I pay people for referrals, right? Mm -hmm. So if you got in a car accident and you called a television attorney, they're not giving you a dime for using their service. If you call me and tell me you've been in an accident, the minimum I'm giving you is $300 for sharing that information with me. So I'm telling people your cousin was in an accident. Your mama was in an accident. Your daddy was in an accident. Why are they calling those people? Call me. Let me provide them with the quality care that they actually deserve. They're going to get their settlement, and I'm going to pay you for referring that to me. Mm. So everybody wins. Damn, everybody. So being though he's accident waiting to happen. I got about like 10 accidents from last. So that's that's $3,000. Yeah, let's go. And I'm doing something special for everyone that's coming to me through your platform, Million Dollars Worth of Game. Off the rip, we're going to start them off at $500 a referral. So mm. anybody that referral, anybody to you, $500. $500. I just got to get the ebook and everything they need to be in there about how to receive $500. So, so hold on, no, time out. Let, me, let me make sure you get this ebook because you ain't get this 500 sock into your pocket because you got a lot of, you know, middle room warriors who's going to turn into middlemen. We got a lot of basement warriors. You know what I'm saying? I know the basement warrior game. I, I'm going to do a study on that because I used to be one. But mm -hmm. listen, at the end of the day, you want to get your blessings. What you need to do is to get this free ebook right now so you get all the information in this ebook of how to do what you need to do, how to make 10K. In 30 days with accidents referral, I need you to text middleman to 833-232-9941. 833-232-9941. Right now, get this so you get that 500. You know, she's giving them $500 referrals. You come from here. I mean, type that middleman in. Now, let me ask you a question. Because see, a lot of people in the hood, right, mm -hmm. they get into car accidents. And they be like, man, he ripped my bump off, man. Fuck my back up a little bit, but it's cool. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get my bumper fixed for the little 480. Yep. Cause I don't want my motherfucking insurance to go Damn, up, man. Yep. I ain't fuck my little back, man. My back be all right. Get a little massage or something, get my little tender massage, my blower back, work it out for me. They really should have just called you and they could have just I'm so glad you asked that question. So that's what most of us do when we're in a car accident. Our number one thing that we want resolved is our car being repaired. We're calling the at-fault insurance company. We're setting that claim up. They're paying us. That's black and white. That's why you don't hire an attorney for property damage because that's a black and white situation. You hire an attorney for bodily injury because that's not black and white. But once that property damage claim is opened, you might as well maximize the claim. You're not doing any more damage to the person or their insurance policy by going after the bodily injury portion of that claim. So you're literally leaving money on the table. You have the wrong mindset about how this even works in the first place. So, and the insurance company wants you to do that because that leaves more money in their pockets when they don't do that. Mm -hmm. But when you open that claim against the person that hits you, their policy is going up. So if you, uh, for the property damage, so if we now go after the bodily injury, the policy, the policy was going up regardless the same amount, no matter what. Yeah. We might as well maximize this. Yeah, because we do that in the community a lot because Gil said that, man. We always just like, man, I could just pay a little $100, get that new bump, and it was that five like you go right there. Everybody's whole thing be man, I don't want my insurance, insurance to, to go, go up. up man. But if they cause the accident, the other person's gonna call your insurance company, your insurance is going up. If you didn't cause the accident, your insurance is not involved. No, see how I'm just saying how I work in the hood, it'd be like boom. Hey, you got my bumper. You it's good. cool. I'm out. You, you good. good? I'm good. Yeah, we don't. It'd be a good battle. They be yeah, everybody yeah, yeah, like yeah, me yeah. good. Yeah, we're here to educate the hood. That stops today. <laughs> Y'all need to get y'all money. I'm looking That's at you right shit. in the camera, hood. Well, cool. Let's cool. get this money. Because cool. even if you're in the hood, you can't ride around with no insurance. You are paying for your car insurance. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. Because you most of you me. should should have car. Everybody should have it. There's probably yes. some people riding but around you uninsured. You educate me because I hit a nigga with the boom. Oh shit. My fuck, dog. Hold on, oh, wait. This is saucy. Wait, hold on, dog. No, you ain't got to call in. Change what, a couple dollars. What's that? What that calls about? Six hundred. Okay. They be like, yeah. That's twelve hundred. Nigga, oh, uh, <laughs> good looking. <laughs> okay, we got you. But for the ones who are calling to get their property damage taken care of, yes, that's not running into you, who's going to pay them directly and doing it the right way. Yeah. Because you know what? Also, when you're in an accident, a lot of times you don't feel any pain right away. So now you've paid me twelve hundred to get my car fixed. Next week my back is really hurting. Yeah, like it didn't. It took a, a couple of minutes for. I mean, a couple of days for it to like work. I can't do anything further. 
I could, but realistically, you like, I paid you off already. Now you're untrustworthy. So if my back starts hurting, I can't even call your insurance company to do anything different because you done paid me that way. So that's dumb. And we ain't going to do that. No, we ain't going to do that. No. Not no more. Not no more. I mean, when I did that, that was back in the day. That was back in the day. But yeah, you know what ain't... else? So say, for instance, if you did hit somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a good example? So say, for an example, you are at fault for the car accident. That person, nine times out of ten, is going to call your insurance company to file a claim. You might as well refer them to pursue their personal injury settlement to me because the claim is going to be filed anyway. Mm. That's the easiest way to refer somebody because mm. the damage is already done. Mm. Man, that's major. So at the end of the day... Uh, yeah, because I remember the time you backed up to that white man. He was about to tune you the fuck up. Oh, yeah. He snapped <laughs> on me. He flipped out. I said, come on, we're going to get out of here. You know, he, he did 20 years in jail, so when he first come home, right? He didn't know how to drive. Out. But he drive like he was he still snapped. 17. <laughs> he got in the car and put that shit in reverse, ain't look out, no mirrors. Boom! Dude, like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, he snapped. Yes. He, he tapped right. I'm sorry, dude. I'm, I apologize. It's my fault. I, Yo, like, you they went up, but I, I listen, I, what car was I driving? Van. Yeah, your van, nigga. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't Messrs. Car, but we just got, we oh, went our way. You yeah. tapped the shit out. That joint was loud. Boom! I'm it like, was. Oh, shit. Was. I ain't even want to turn around and see what he hit him. <laughs> He, he ain't had no problem. He, he see people's car. Yeah. You know, because everybody, they don't think about the physical part. Yeah. Nobody. Because a lot of times, Nobody. a lot of accidents, it don't even be no damage. So everybody be like, we cool. Mm -hmm. Nobody be like, damn, did it snap my back? Mm -hmm. Or this this happened, my mm -hmm. leg? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here to educate the people. I've, I've been there. At 19 years old, I was in my own car accident. I've been watching. I tell people my fondest, well, not even my fondest, my earliest memory of any kind of marketing is a personal injury attorney. I'm like four years old. I'm watching The Price is Right with my grandmother. And every other commercial is this personal injury. Like, personal injury attorneys go hard. No, they do. It's a lot of them. marketing, right? Mm -hmm. And for me to be 19 years old and it's still not dawn on me, I should have called this attorney I've been seeing since I was four years old. It's crazy. So when I got into the industry at 23, I was like, it's really my job to tell folks, like, what they're entitled to. Like, we're... We're in the accident. You should get your money. Like, and it, it doesn't have to be any major injury. It doesn't have to be a broken bone. It doesn't have to be a hospital stay. Any type of minor discomfort, any type of soreness, any type of stiffness, any headache, anything you feel now that you never felt before that accident is worth <clears throat> thousands of dollars. So I offer a free class every Thursday where I go over things like this. And that's also included with the free book that they can tap in. But they really don't understand the process of how personal injury even works. So but, that's why I'm your personal injury. But this ebook, e this ebook, once they text middleman to eight three three, they get that ebook for free, and two, they can tap it with, in with me on Thursdays for my free class. So, so all you got to do is text middleman to eight three three two three two ninety nine forty one eight three three two three two ninety nine forty one, and they're going to give you the free how to make ten k in thirty days with accident referral. So you telling me that these people is going to be able to read this ebook and become you? Yeah. They, well, that's ten thousand dollars. I make a little bit more than that. No, I'm just saying, but still, <laughs> but, but, but still. But, but what I'm saying is, but they can become me. Yeah. So this is the introduction. Yes. Once you get a little taste, because that's how I started. It was mm. just a little taste, and I was like, hmm, this is paying me way more than my jobs are paying me. Your jobs? Mm. You had multiple jobs. Multiple jobs. What was you working at? I was working at the mat counter. Um, I did makeup. Mm -hmm. I was literally back driving back and forth from Savannah, Georgia to Atlanta until they transferred me. Mm. And then how I got started in this, I was working for a marketing firm that printed club flyers, literally. Mm -hmm. I was passing out flyers that promoted, if you're in a car accident, let me know, for $11 an hour is how I even found out this was a possibility. Mm. And then one of the chiropractors that we were passing these flyers out for had a referral process for his patients. So whenever his patients referred him someone, he would pay them $200 for those referrals. So I was like, can I refer them to you even though I'm not a patient? And he was like, sure. And it's been it's 15 years later, this is all I do. She been, she like a tow truck. She, she yeah. accident, she's, you hurt? Come on, get you in. Yeah. So I've been um, <laughs> almost- right. That dude's just pull up out of nowhere. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shoot your hit car and boop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what I really love? You they sent somebody to you. Uh -huh. Yes. You were talking about credibility. Yeah. So this is my first million dollar year. Mm. I could have been teaching this, but I wanted to be secure in my messaging and that I could really help the people. I consider myself, I'm a Sagittarius, if y'all know anything about mm. Zodiacs. We're one of the realest and bluntest of them all. Mm -hmm. I'm like a Jay-Z on the low. Like my mindset and how he moves, I feel like we okay. like the same people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So I said all of that to say, like, I ain't got to sell you. Like, I ain't got to fluff you. I ain't got to lie to you. Like, I'm I'm good. But I'm confident now in what I've done over the last five years when I quit my job at six months pregnant, so I got to figure this shit out, mm -hmm. that 
I can help you do the same thing. Now, when you say when you say your first million year, I want to clarify that for them. Is you saying million after taxes or, or reaching a million mark? Like I reached when? the million mark, so it's okay. gross. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's, you know what I mean? Because from just talking to people, letting them know what I do, using my social media. So that that couch potato that you yeah. referred to is perfect. Couch now. warrior. Mm-hmm. Couch mm-hmm. warrior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a perfect opportunity for you to get off of the couch, mm-hmm. get a little taste. All I wanted was five referrals a week when I first got it started. Mm-hmm. That was $1,000 for me back then, and that was a lot Mm -hmm. for what I needed to do in my life. Mm -hmm. And so a little bit goes a long way with accident referrals. So we even, for you guys, going to do the 500, Mm -hmm. but we have other tiers. So once they refer me seven at 500, then it goes to 750 per referral. Then after you hit that 750 mark, it goes to $1,000 per referral Mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. Let's get this so, money. So, 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 so blessings is giving y'all these blessings. I don't and she need nothing from like, y'all. I'm trying to give to y'all. Right. And she giving you blessings at the blessings. And mm-hmm. people didn't even know this was a thing because I didn't. That's why I didn't teach it. I'm like, I made this up. But it's a, if anybody can make a million dollars from what they're doing, it's shareable. Now, right. what you need to do right Hold now. Hold on. I just want to say this. And blessings is she's giving y'all these blessings. And like she said, she feel like Jay-Z. Hov, she feel like Beyonce. Like, just another ass. All right, go listen, ahead. but listen, what y'all need to do right now so y'all get these blessings, y'all need to text, y'all need to text middleman at 833-232-9941 and you're going to get the free ebook, How to Make 10K in 30 Days with Accident Referral. Check it out also on Instagram. The acts, I'm talking about, right, I'm talking about this right now on Instagram. You got to check out, if you don't do nothing, follow on Instagram, but if me, I'm following Instagram and I'm getting a free ebook at The Blessings Attitude on IG, man. Go check out, man, Blessings. McCoy Thompson, listen, we respect you. We love what you're doing. Uh, Keep doing your thing. Uh-huh. And this is another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game. Been the spotlight, and it's just like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Now everybody love me. When I don't say, have no problems. When you say everybody love you, what do you mean by that? Everybody love me. Mm-hmm. I don't have no problems. They look at my growth. They can see the difference now. Mm-hmm. They proud of me. Mm-hmm. Even the streets proud of me. That's yes, sad. And you and you a person that I could say you got a cult following out here, yeah. like you you I, I yeah, don't I don't real. I don't know nothing you associated with other than B W A. That's yes, it. That's anyway. it. I don't yes, know sir. no record labels. I don't know nothing. nothing. It's just like oh no, he just do him. He don't be associated with the rappers. He ain't really. I ain't seen him on a whole bunch of features. You a bunch of lists come out. Oh rappers that fell off. Rappers that ain't doing it no more. Rappers that he ain't never on that motherfucker. List because and you Alhamdulillah. Just, yeah. and you just keep Alhamdulillah. and you just keep going up. Every time I see you on stage, your fans is in tune with what you got going on. They 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 channeled in. They love it. Like the the slower the slower you go, the further you get. Mm. Mm-hmm. The slower you go, the further you get. Anything fast don't last. I like going slow because I love it. It's crazy because every time I see, it, as soon as I see that uh, that tour schedule come out. Sold out, sold out. Sold oh, yeah, like, but that be, motherfucker be heavy, though. It'd be, long, it'd be a long list of cities. Boy, that <laughs> shit be, a, be heavy. And, and you just, and you got die hard. I'm talking about since you came home, it's just been BWA. It was just like you got die hard people that, that come. That was one of the toughest transitions for me. Once I came home in 2018, I had to find myself again. Mm-hmm. I had to find what really did it for me because before it was. It was strong feeling and emotion attached to the hurt and the pain I had been through. But I noticed that even my children proud of me now. Mm-hmm. And that's really what led me to my healing journey was I wanted to, I didn't want to pass on any past traumatic like traumas on to my children. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be a greater father for my children. And that's really what speared me into self-healing. It was very, very difficult. And I'm still healing. It's, not even done yet. We mm. just scratching the surface. Oh, yeah. Peeling back the layers day by day. You still doing semen retention, man, or is you finally letting it go, man? I've been on a, like a five-year semen retention journey. I, not, see, what most people don't, you going to release every now and then. Oh, all right. <laughs> it's, <laughs> like you going to have a wet dream here and there. You going to release, but you don't beat yourself up about it because anything that's in your body that need to come out going to naturally come out. But I don't watch porn and masturbate, and even when I'm with a woman, once she get off, I'm done. <laughs> you just you, you, you chilling. Yeah, cause I ain't to please my partner. That's it. That's all. And the reason I had stopped even having sexual conversations, especially with women, because they was using like what I was talking about, like the wow factor of it, and using it for clickbait. Then when you go look at the whole interview, you like, man, dude, really makes sense. But it makes a man more cognitive in his life. 
Your, mm -hmm. your, your life force is sacred. I tell men that everybody laughed at me when I first talked about it on y'all on y'all yeah. podcast. Not everybody talking about they do it now. So yeah, I've been seeing that too. I've be, be been seeing that too. Yeah, man, y'all know where y'all got it from. Y'all yeah. know I'm dead. Y'all yeah. yeah. know yeah. where y'all got it from. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, everybody. I've been seeing a lot of people talk about like, it. You I had yeah. never heard of that. If you, you look at men that release a lot, they skin don't glow. They don't have no glow. They be they they they, they skin almost look gray. Dang, but my it, shit gray, it, it's your life. My it's your life, my shit's dark gray. Mm -hmm. It's your life force. Now, now. It's your gray too, cuz I'm, yeah. glow. <laughs> I'm glowing. Do you know? I'm going to say this. Um, last time you was here, you said you got people that you want to work with, that you like, but you're afraid to ask me. Like, man, I don't want to get denied. Den I don't want nobody to reject me. No, I said me. I had a fear of rejection, Reach but fear I of stepped rejection. out of that. Who, oh, so did you step to some, like you yeah. hit some people up, like, yo, come on, let's get it. Yeah, I, I, I got an everybody DM. And, and what happened? All the response was good? Nothing. Oh, oh nobody responded? They, they responded, but I guess they might have been too busy for little old me. Damn. <laughs> so 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 we get, we hype him up to say, yo, call it. It's not a bad thing. See, we look at it like a negative thing. Yeah, not, not saying that. It just wasn't the right time. time. We wasn't in alignment. Or, or we wasn't in alignment at that time. We may be in alignment in the future. Mm -hmm. or we may never be in alignment. It doesn't matter. But I tried. And I could live with myself knowing that I tried. Mm -hmm. yeah, but that's good. I did you. all I could do. And then I've been uh, going to concerts lately. What concerts you went to? I went to Drake concert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went to Usher concert. Okay. Like, I just been going, like, watch the greats. Mm -hmm. And it been cool because I got to be, like, a fan again. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Did you learn anything at them concerts? I learned all kind of shit. What you learn? All kind of shit. I just be studying. Yeah. I just be studying. Because I ain't seen Usher perform, but I heard he got a hell of a show. Oh, yeah. my God. The performance. It's a hell of a performance. Hey, he the truth. That Drake concert was crazy too. Yeah, yeah. it was crazy. It yeah. was cool. I went twice. I went two nights in a row. Yeah, I yeah. seen Drake. Drake fucks that shit up. Yeah, it was crazy. Twenty one. Him. They was that. That was a good ass show. Yeah, I like. The way they had I the like their presentation. The you, I like their presentation and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I seen um, Usher concert and his stage performance. It was. I liked it. So you learned some things that you're going to take and add to, yes, your, sir. Add to your approach. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I got to put it with my program. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with borrowing some game, baby. Ain't nothing. Oh. Well, who, who, do, who do you listen to outside of- I've outside? been listening to like a lot of African music lately. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like Afro beats and all that. Okay. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of that. It make me feel good in the morning. Mm -hmm. Just playing it, the energy, yeah, the vibe they, Yeah, I like I like that energy. Like on my way to the gym, mm -hmm. I listen to that. Nigga be doing it's like uplifting. He be doing eight hundred push off of don't stop, don't stop. Everybody can do this. Yes, I love Vernon Boy. I love Vernon Boy. Yes, I love Vernon Boy. Yeah, Vernon Boy. Vernon Boy. Yeah, Vernon Boy. 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 I Biggest like all kid, of that. All yeah. of them. Yeah. But uh, like, who do you, like, who do you want to work with? If you could do a song with somebody, who you want to do a song with? Anybody who want to do a song with me. I swear to God. I know that sound anybody, weird. When you say anybody, when you say anybody. The greats. The greats. Yeah, the greats. All the greats, okay. I want to work with all the greats. Mm-hmm. Why not? That's, that's, that's your dream as an artist to work with the greats. But you one of them. Oh, yeah, I work with Kevin Gates all the time. Yeah, you one of them. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I love him. He's a great guy. <laughs> now, approaching this album, what was on your mind when you was creating a new album? Nothing. I just put everything on the table. All the hurt, all the pain, and even the celebration, like celebrating myself. Like one of my lines when I say, um, purpose-driven, I'm developing riches. You pleasure-driven, you develop addictions. Elevated and ranking, my dick is not friendly. I would not be distracted by women. I was just. Mm -hmm. How you get that? I, I just want to know how you get that stern. Like, like I ain't gonna be. I'm not gonna be distracted. Cause by I women. notice. I notice if if you ever had a nine to five or you ever was hustling. Soon as you made some money, that's when your phone start ringing. It's an energy. Money hmm. not really real. It's an energy. Soon as you make some money, people from out the woodworks go to calling you. And I noticed, I was like, whenever I'm doing something I'm supposed to do, that's when all the distractions come. You ain't never got time for me when I got free time. But when I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, the universal law, which universal law governs all events, it tests me. 
man, I'm going to stay on my pivot. That's when all the distractions come whenever I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Now y'all got all the time in the world. <laughs> that money piling in. Making the things happen. Man, I'm a, hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a chase me. That's why I'm here with it. I made a vow like I never miss a workout for nobody or anything. I'm always put raising my frequency first. And I notice the days that I don't want to work out be the days I get my best workout and the best things happen. I say, ooh, it's raining. Ain't nobody going to be in there today. And that's when I get the best, like, results, the days I don't want to do it. So, and shout out to my mama. She didn't, like, got me to start being comfortable in uncomfortable situations. So that's just where I'm at with it right now. Mm. Adversity is what builds character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It that's does. what it's about, man. If it ain't rough, it ain't us. Mm. Talk heavy. <laughs> that's where I'm at with it right now. <laughs> Yeah, now, I need to get in the gym, man. You inspiring me, man. man. You I'm already gonna... be in the gym. You be playing no. basketball and boxing and shit, man. Yeah, but I need to, I need to really get my breathing and shit in order because that shit you did with the behind your back. Shit. You saw you got better results when you breathe. Yeah, but I can't do it. I got to get that right. You could do it. You could do it because my lower back be hurting, and I realize they, they everywhere I go they say because your hamstrings and. Shit. So tight, yoga, and it's all. It yep. might be your hips. It not, yeah, might yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they be say. Your, yep, hip your hips, yep. Because I used, to, I used so to have lower back pain until I started strengthening and stretching my hip flexors. So yoga really helped you like I that. I swear to God, I used I, when they first presented it to me. I told you when I was in prison. Yeah, yeah, I, I said, man, I ain't about to do that shit. That's <laughs> pussy. I'm about to do no yoga. <laughs> the fuck, you know what I mean? Touching my toes. Yeah. I ain't about to be touching my toes in prison. But then once I, once I, and that's really what started my journey. Mm -hmm. Like, I got, I had got off it though, but I got back on it out here in the free world. And I was like, yeah, this was up. I do it every morning now. I don't feel right if I don't do yoga. Mm. Polite is the truth too, because it's resistance and it's stretching. It's the truth. Yeah. What was it like, you know, I, a lot, I run into a lot of brothers coming home from the joint. What was your mindset? When you first came home, because no matter how much money you got in the bank. I harbor <coughs> resentment. Okay, break that down. I harbor resentment because out of sight really mean out of mind. Mm -hmm. And the people I felt like they were supposed to be there wasn't there how I felt like they should have been there. And I do a lot for everybody. So I harbor resentment. I came home with a vengeance. Mm -hmm. I was mad. I was upset. I harbor resentment. My, my first thing was, I'm going to show you. I'm going to shit on you. That was my first thing. That was my mindset. I got to be honest. How long, did, how long did it take for you to get up out of that mindset? I, I still ain't out of that mindset, to be honest, beloved. Mm -hmm. I just make it look good. And, it, and, and let me just say this. And I me, reinforce positivity in my life. I still be like, I still be like, yeah, it was meant to happen because if that wouldn't happen, all of this wouldn't happen. But no, I was nominated for the Grammys. I had that shit taken from me. Everybody took my whole swag and ran off with it and made millions and ain't salute where it came from. I harbor resentment toward that. Y'all know where y'all got this from. Mm. Y'all know I'm mm. him. Mm. Who the first person to ever say his imperial majesty? I am H-I-M, his imperial majesty. Mm. Ben's driver, big time, a breadwinner anatomy. Mm. So, I, yeah, I How do. love when he talk that shit. I, I harbor resentment. <laughs> I, I still harbor resentment, but I take that resentment and I put it into something that's going to you know, bring productivity. A lot of times you don't see, like you build your own thing, BWA. I seen you. I seen you, I seen you build your own thing. We're in the dictionary. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> I seen you. I seen one who you. earns money, one who earns income to support a household, a bread okay, one. So I seen you build that. And I see you didn't deal with a lot of people. Like you was just like, I'm going to just build my house. You wasn't bouncing all around. What kept you disciplined enough to say, I'm just going to believe Being you? in the streets. Okay, give me the game on that. Like, you know, when you, you notice, like, when you go kick it with other dudes that be doing their thing, you start getting caught up in the shit that they got going. You get caught up in their rapture. You get caught up, and when I say rapture, you mm -hmm. get caught up in their indictments. Mm -hmm. They beef be your beef. Mm -hmm. You know, when you do that hanging, so I just keep it like this here. And then prison also, because, you know, I don't do no, I'm not social, really. I'm kind of anti-social in a sense, because I don't watch TV. I barely get on the phone. You know, I read a lot. But you got six phones. Yeah. I got six phones. 
<laughs> but you only say two. Like you broke it down for me in the video that time. He said two, and I seen him when I seen him. I'm like, hold up, Kev, you got more than two. Like this is like he and he broke down when he said in, in two phones. He broke down how many. It was he had. misinterpreted. Yeah. And why was that misinterpreted? Because I said I need. I got two phones. One for the plug. One for the load. Uh -huh. I got two phones. One for the bitches. One for the dope. Think I need two more. Okay, that's so six yeah. phones. Oh, yeah, yeah, six. Yeah. Oh, all right, bet. That was crazy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> He, got, he did he, say that. He said, I don't even talk to him. I don't even talk. He's just handling business. Yes, they handle sir. business with, for different people. Different. Is it a different phone for different people for different yes, crap? Sir. Different okay. things. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Different strokes for different folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different numbers. You got the phone that you don't answer like that because they just be blowing it up. That's my, um, my primary phone is this little bit of small phone right here. Hmm. I don't have no social media apps, nothing on there. Just my music. And my immediate family could get in touch with me. This is my gym phone. This is the phone that I always have with me. All of that other stuff, I don't want to ever be, um, I like to stay mentally cognitive. I put them phones on the charger and in the other room on airplane mode because, like I told you, when you sleep with the phone in the room, it disrupts your melatonin cycles. And, like, that's what we need to heal. Our body produce serotonin in the daytime, melatonin at night, especially women. Don't need to have no electromagnetic devices in the in the room with them when they sleep, because you know they are governed by the moon. Mm -hmm. They spiritual because they. Could How turn, you know all this shit? How do you I be reading a lot. They spiritual. They could turn something liquid into something physical, mm -hmm. so especially when they got your child in their stomach, turn, transforming liquid into something physical. You know what I'm saying? They don't need to have no phones or nothing in the room. Were you around the OGs when you was in prison? All uh, my partners like in their seventies. Mm -hmm. and, and what wisdom? What, what was the most wisdom? That you, you know, wh who gave you the most wisdom when you was in the penitentiary? Who gave me the most wisdom in life? My grandfather. Oh, your grandfather. All right, now when you was in the penitentiary, was there some OGs there? Yeah, they had a couple of old heads in there that I kicked it with. But, but, but what is it about your grandfather? What did he instill in you? He let me see it. He was hands on with me. And the stuff he said back then ain't make sense. Now I wish it, it make all the sense in the world now. Right. Like when he say, hey, when somebody paint you a picture, don't let them paint you another picture. Or like my nickname, Dick, he'll put me to the side. Hey, listen to me, Dick. Hey, when, hey, what you see with your eyes, your heart must believe. And you don't make sense back then. Like, what the fuck he talking about? You see with your eyes, your mm -hmm. heart must believe. Mm -hmm. Hey, when a person show you who they is, they believe, believe it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like the, I think the, the, most, the most beautiful thing I ever heard, though, um, G. Rome told me, he said, uh, suspect evil of no one. Until see it, once see it, forget it not. For once an enemy could never be a friend. And a lot of times we have an overly forgiving heart. Mm -hmm. And it's cool to forgive. But I'm not going to forget what you did me. Ever. I forgive you because I'm releasing it. I'm forgiving you for me. But I'm not about to be silly and naive and forget. And I can't forget you fucked me over. No. Yeah, yeah Man, I can't. Hurt. I ain't going to never forget hurt. that. <laughs> I can't. No, I can't forget that. Shit. You ain't going for that shit. No. At all. See, I didn't even know that phrase, but I know that I know how yeah, I feel. Now I'm gonna give everybody a chance because I'm not gonna operate out of fear. So I suspect evil of no one until I see it. Once see it, forget it not. For once an enemy could never be a friend. Mm -hmm. You showing me you're not a friend. You showed me. Now it's small thing. We gonna make mistakes, and I'm big enough to admit if I'm, I'm a man, I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I, hey, forgive me, I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you if I'm wrong. And, and you know a problem. But my that? heart genuine though. I'm not gonna steal from you. I'm not gonna do no bitch ass shit to you. I ain't only wanna fuck your side, bitch. Mm -hmm. I'm just not that type of nigga. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what's crazy? A prime example of what he's saying. Remember, I had a cameraman, I had altercation with him. Several years later, he tried to come back. Oh man, I'm sorry. I said, I can't, I could never have you back, man. I, I just had a real situation. I had to put hands yeah. on you, man. I could have. <laughs> nah, I ain't. I ain't. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can mm -hmm. <laughs> so once you're in me, I can never, we can never be friends mm -hmm. again. I ain't mm -hmm. mad at you. I, I forgive you, but we ain't going to be friends. Nah, we can't do this. We can't no do more. that no more, man. I can never trust you, man. Mm. That's raw. So the album, you don't even know who featured on that. It's not that. It's, um. Do you have any features? I think I got, do I have a feature? To who? Oh, Sexy Red on the Yonsei. Sexy Ooh, Red and BG okay. on the Yonsei Freestyle. That's it, huh? Okay. And that's it. 
Yeah. But I didn't even know that song was going to be on the album, to be honest. I hate to shout out to BG. Don't kill me, big brother. Yeah. Shout out to Sexy. Don't shoot, please. Yeah. Didn't even it wasn't, know. It wasn't intentional. You didn't I'm even so know. used to dropping albums without features to where it just, it didn't even register that I had a feature. Yeah. How many tracks on it? I don't even know. You don't even know. Huh? How many? Oh, still, they're still putting it together. <laughs> they still add tracks. <laughs> I don't know. Don't, don't, but, don't shoot. I just want to say, man, it's a lot of it's a lot of rappers out here. I made I, I damn it made over sixty songs. Mm. Well, what is your formula? Cause you, 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 I went in there one day to a guitar beat, and I was like, I was confused. Hard to trust again with all my heart's been mm. through, been misused. If not the one you choose, I fall back from you, and it just it, it's mm. it's like. I'm watching myself become something different in the in the studio. Mm. There's Dude. a lot of niggas out here rappers, man. I look at you like a brand. Yeah, it was a it was a guitar beat playing, and I was like, damn. And that's what happened. And then it and then it had went somewhere. And then I was like, then I did another song where I was like, uh, mistakes make us great. I'm proud of you. I think you're doing amazing. But I was talking to myself. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, I need to celebrate myself. I said, I think you're doing amazing. Mm. Yeah, nigga, Step yeah, inside yeah, this vocal booth, releasing all my pain. The things I deal with on a daily drive, a normal person insane. I could relate. I gave my love and in exchange, I got shitted on. It happens on a daily. Mm. And I just, it just, it just, it just had what? Well, mistakes make us great. I'm proud of you. I think you're doing amazing. Did, and did, it just. Did you uh, go somewhere in a different location to record? No, sir. You just, but you got I went to a different uh, state of mind. Okay. I was in a different state of mind. Cause I was like, um, I was this time I was celebrating myself more. Cause I make music that I could work out to. And when I be playing my music on live, people be like, man, why you don't release that? I say, you know what? I'm gonna start putting that type of music out then. Cause I like to play shit that's gonna turn me up in the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it ever a time where it's though, um, I said, I said something one time and an artist wound up calling us and I wrote like a, a letter to rappers, like artists. And I was like, I basically told them some of their best shit is already on the hard drive. Right. And they're afraid to put it out. I said, stay off the TikToks, stay up looking at everybody's shit, and put your stuff out because you'll be chasing something. And what you're chasing, you already got on, the, your engineer got on that hard drive, some shit you did a year and a half ago. That's your, a banger. Your, your authentic self. Yeah, but you looking you're on no TikTok. no one else. Yeah, We're achieving look, greatness. And he called Gil like, yo, man, wow, look, that John, he called me. Shout out to Young Blue. Yeah, Young Blue. Young you know I mean? Blue called like, me. He was yeah, like, yeah, shout out to Young Blue. He was like, man, what the, I've been needing to hear that ain't nobody telling me that shit. And I got all these bangers here, I'm looking at the that, social the media. Song, the song me and him did was a classic though, that yeah. Ice on My Bay remix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a classic. Now, now, did, did, have you ever had a time where though social media had you messed up in your approach or anything or like? No, sir, but okay. I had a time where I was chasing fame. Break that down. Like in 20, when I came home in like 2019, I was like, man, why they not saluting me how they supposed to? And I was just chasing fame, like chasing it, chasing it, chasing it. And I wasn't getting nowhere. Like, why they not, like, why they not saluting me? I'm putting out mixtape after mixtape after mixtape. They not saluting me how they supposed Who to. Who you wanted to salute you? The world. Mm -hmm. Y'all do everything I do. Y'all emulate everything I do. Like from when, when I was in jail, like every rapper that came, I was Kevin Gates Jr. Mm. To be honest, y'all y'all ran off with the y'all ran off with the material, but y'all ain't salute where y'all got it from. Damn. I came, I the first one came in the game with that penitentiary sway, gold mouth dog. I came in the game with that. I came in the game talking regulars. Yes, he did. Moving around solo by myself, pants sagging, two pair of drawers on. Yeah, in case I gotta go, go back go in the back band. In. You gotta go back in. I came in the game with that sweat. Two pair draws on, nigga. A day, nigga. You sit your ass down. You ain't doing that. I'm saying, though, but like, we got we got Two pair draws on, nigga. Not, well, we got to call a spade a spade, yeah. though. I came in the game with that because I was really thugging. I was in and out of jail my whole career. I came in the game with that sweat. Like, people, and I watched it get emulated and taken, and I watched it get commercialized, and... I watched nobody saluted where it came from. But with all your success, you still it's still a chip on your shoulder about that. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. I still harbor resentment toward that. And then we and then do and something. then you know like like when I said in one song I was like and I I shouldn't have said that but I 
I meant what I said. You know, fake rappers acting like they rocking how I'm rocking. Saluted me in private, but afraid to stand on side me. Publicly, you was afraid to stand on side me because you know. The public, the public not stupid. They know where you got this from. Mm -hmm. mm. It be a lot of that, too. Yeah, self-made, stand up. If you ain't got two hats under your belt, then pick your pants up. You know, I'm the one who started that. That swag, that Luca Bryson. I mean, it's crazy that I'm even speaking about this right now because I usually be trying to keep it positive, and, which I am. I'm being very positive. But you did start it. But yeah, you know, I, I harbor resentment toward that still. And that's, that's, that's what gave me my competitive drive to keep going in the gym. I take that energy and that anger and I put it all in the gym and make me better. How many songs you got on hard drives right now? Millions. Man. And what you going to do with them? And what you going to do with them? Hmm? And what you going to do with them? I'm about to start releasing everything. When you say releasing. This, this is my last album. When you say last album, break that down. This is my last album with my label. Oh, so you doing totally independent? No, I'm gonna do uh, distribution. A distribution deal. Yeah, cause I love I love how everything going right now, but I'm gonna do distribution after this. Inshallah, Allah. Mm -hmm. Inshallah. Cause you know nothing's promised. No. Yeah, but you gonna do distribution, and you say when you say you releasing everything, is you packaging it up for albums or? I don't know. Um. I make so many different genres of music. Like I make reggaeton, I make African music, I make mm -hmm. all of that. So I might just do, do I might just do like different groups. It's gonna all be me, but it's just gonna be different titles or groups. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do something. I, don't, I haven't figured it out yet because I'm still on my journey. I'm just scratching the surface. But I even do soft rock, rock and roll, country. A lot of the country music that you hear now that like rappers be doing. You know, Kevin started that. Mm. That ain't come from y'all. I've been doing it. To be honest, though, let's if we just being honest. Like I'm not hating on nobody. I'm not shooting no shots at nobody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But all of that come from me. The soft rock and roll, all of that, all that come from me. Mm. Mm. Big, big. If you want to go back, if you like, 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 if you think, like, go back to 2012, Narco Traficante. When I put out Narco Traficante. Knuckle Terrific Country, the song I did, mm -hmm. they speak in Spanish on a Latin, on a trap beat. They didn't have a a Latin trap genre then. Take Ocadron and he was making music like talking about street shit, but it wasn't no just now you got now you got rappers that's doing like Latin trap. Mm. And that was twenty twelve when you did that. They didn't have that genre. Yeah. I ain't saying I invented it, but I started it. They told me I was crazy. My Spanish wasn't even that good then. You just was like, I'm, I feel this. I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm doing it. Cause my my like my cousins, they were like, man, you gotta talk that Spanish shit on there. No, go traffic, you know. And we was just in the studio going crazy. My cousin P, he was in the studio with me. How do you feel seeing how powerful and how legendary Louisiana has become for the rap industry? It's a beautiful thing. It's, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. It's beautiful. It's, it's something I really, really want to say so bad, but I'm going to just leave it alone. But it's, it's very beautiful. Mm. But, like, I've been trying to unite. The, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to leave it alone, though. Yeah, I feel like it could be, I could, Louisiana could be united a little bit more. You know what I mean? I've been had that. That's been my vision. I remember, I remember back uh, years ago, you you was connecting with NBA and shit. I thought y'all was going, you know what I mean? We still, we still communicate. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love him. Yeah, but my wish for him is the wish of Allah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We still communicate though, and I love him. Mm -hmm. Because man, ain't no ain't no need to be beefing. Everybody getting money, man. Everybody I was never beefing with him. Yeah, though. No, I'm the saying, internet, yeah. the internet made that like that dance, and I ain't. You know, like I ain't, I ain't about to get on it and go against the internet. You can't win with the internet. No, you can't. Y'all say what y'all want to say. That's like they just said that, man. Uh, Drake was uncomfortable when you kissed her and and she pulled. I said, okay, cool, fuck it. <laughs> she was, yeah. she was uncomfortable. Yeah, the fuck pe it. People, people that don't know you get 
they they put yeah, these opinions out. That don't bother me. I ain't worried about the mm-hmm. internet. Yeah. See, cause I don't base life and my results off that. I know that's just bullshit. Right. Mm-hmm. You you just talking behind a keyboard. I catch you in the street, man. Come on, you know what's happening with me. But on that black top, that's how I gauge it. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm in New York, New York love me to death. Mm-hmm. Love me. Mm-hmm. These people love me here. I'm talking about in the streets, on the black top, yeah. walking around. Right. I ain't talking about the people yeah, sitting behind this yeah, is yeah, guessing right. and on phones. It could be a little kid. It could be that, a little kid. 10 yeah, years that old doesn't matter in to me. In the middle of America, I don't judge my results in life based off what I see on social media because the, what like you I see said, in real life, the, the, comp- the killer of our joy is making comparisons. People make it look good. Mm-hmm. You comparing your real life to somebody else's high life, real? Mm-hmm. That's that's you, you gonna kill yourself making comparisons. Right. But when you step out in the streets on that blacktop, that's how I know when I'm moving. Like that song, Birds Calling, I know that song moving because they, they, it's in the streets. They pulling up Buku, Birds Calling, it's in a trap for me, new low, back on the road, come with that work for me. That's all they playing right now in the streets. Mm-hmm. So so you, your whole thing is, the black top, that's where it's at. All this other shit is just Yeah, that's on. social media, but, don't but, matter But one thing me. I would say, I was talking to a young artist, uh, V's from Detroit, we was talking the other day, and I told him, he's like, wow, you know, what is hot? I said, everybody got a different form of what's hot. And I believe when you hot, the people going to tell you you hot. It ain't it ain't got nothing to do with me telling you I'm hot. It ain't got nothing with you telling I'm that nigga. You got to find <laughs> yourself with this mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. And I done had to find myself a lot of times with this shit. Mm-hmm. But I found myself. And one thing, I and, and the conversation led to this. I said, uh, I said one thing about it, is I said, what makes you hot is that them ticket sales don't lie. You know how long I've been doing this, big brother? Talk to me. 20 years. Okay. I've been doing this 20 years. And where do you feel that you at right now? I love it. You know, when I like when all the artists was going to clubs, I was doing hard ticketed venues, only making a thousand, two thousand dollars. I built my touring fan base. How important is that? It's the most important in the world. Hard ticket sales. You know who the first people that showed me love and put me on the front of their tour? Who? Who people try to, who people, they, they say whatever they want about him, but that's my brother, Wiz Khalifa. He mm. the truth. He put you, he put you on the, on the front of, his, he put me on the front of his tour. Mm. It was me, him, Snoop, Janae Aiko. Shout out to Wiz. Shout out to Wiz. Right before I went to prison. Mm-hmm. And that took you, that put you in the ticketing game. When they, when they, when, the, when the satellites came, I had already built a core fan base, but just him exposing me to that, sent me up through the roof. What was different for you? To say, them clubs, that's that's cool. But I'm going this route. I'm going to take this less of money. We'll, Torn. Yeah, what we'll, we'll, we'll made you just say, man, that, that 30 look good right now. That 20 look good. I, but- I, I didn't want it like that. And on one-offs, I still do one-offs. Mm-hmm. But when it came time to tour, I made sure I, I dedicated my, my hustle to the touring. Because that's really where it's at. Hard ticket sales, hard ticket venues. And I stayed small. Even though I could have sold out, I, I I stayed small to make sure when I got to a bigger venue, I was ready to do a ring. Right, when you say small, what is small? How many people? I stayed in a small. I stayed in the TLA. smaller venues. Like like what's what's, what's the count? Like head count? Probably. Two thousand. Like, just 15, smaller. 100. Just smaller than arenas. Yeah. Anything smaller right, than arenas. Yeah. Then B markets. I one of the first artists doing B markets. I got that game from Tech Nine. For, for for them that don't know what a B market is, break a B market. And shout out to Tech Nine, Kansas City, he, our family. Tech Nine, the truth. What is the real the truth? Yeah, but he the, he real, the real truth. You say his name, mm-hmm. and people act like they don't know who he is. He got more money than all these niggas. He the, he wanted to, hey, he the richest in the game, homie. Real talk. They got motherfucking factories down in Kansas City. I done been him to Him and Travis. Him and Travis, you walk in, they got shout motherfucking. Out, shout out to them. They got Harley Davidson's hanging from the motherfucking ceilings for decorations. They man. they really, they, that's who really had speared me into really touring and merch and Things of that nature, like and, and what I love about Tech Nine, he gave me, the, he give you the knowledge if you mm-hmm. want. He give it to yes, you. Yes, he do. Tech, what's going on? We right here right now. Kevin Gates was just giving you your props, but before we get in, before we get into that, Kansas City ain't shit. The Chiefs ain't shit. That's for me. <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on. The only Super Bowl they won. Hold up, hold up. Hold on. You remember when they let me come work out with the team? Yeah. And I said, hey, I'm gonna leave my energy here because y'all bless me and let me work out. They won a Super Bowl that year. Hey, listen. <laughs> Hey Tech, listen, we I'm at the, we we had to get the Chief stuff out of there, but 
Kevin Gill and me, we were just here saluting you for the extraordinary person you are, the extraordinary yes, businessman you are, and the game yes, that you and Trav share, share with people. And me and Gil, we trying to figure out as we coming to the we coming to the headquarters to do this interview, when we gonna do this? <laughs> yeah, man, I'm down like four or five times without a spare, bro, bro. I'm posted for a minute too, cause I just got off a tour. So um we just gotta hook it up, bro, bro. I can't wait. All right, let's get let's get it done. You always on tour. When you not on tour. I know, man. That's my dude. If I have that hey big brother, this gate. Oh, oh, ho, oh, let me face oh he ain't got no face on. He got the Android, man. It's an Alaikum. I got I got an iPhone too. Oh. This gate. It's an Alaikum. All day. I'm What's that, big brother? I was just in here talking about when y'all had let us come by the um by the factory, and I was Wait, telling how you had showed me about the touring game. And they asked me like, "What was it that spirit me to just focus on touring?" I was like, "Tech Nine and Travis, like yeah, they gave me the game." Hold on, did you say this is the father? This Kevin. Oh, what's up, brother? This oh, Kevin man. Gates. <laughs> Oh, what's up, brother? What's cracking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I ain't gonna sit down. Yes, sir. We just did a show together. I didn't get to see you because I had to get out of there after a while. But I know, I know, I know, I know. Yes, sir. But yes, they, sir. they was, they was just talking about like what, what made me focus on touring. I was like, Tick Nine and Travis. That's big, bro, bro. That's big, fam. Yeah. Love and respect to you. I brothers. love you more. You know that, papa. Yes, sir, man. I'll yes, see sir. you soon, man. I can't wait. I'm about to get a phone back. Yes, sir. Tell him we coming all down right, there. All right, Trav. We, I mean, all right, uh, Tech. We coming down there, man. Fuck with you, brother. Okay. I'm going to get with Trav, and we going to hook it up. All right, bet. But Now, his brothers like him with so much knowledge, and they're really doing it on the big scale. That merch, I, I think I think a lot, of, a lot of people don't know how important the merch is. Is that merch real important? That merch money yeah. series? Yeah. I have a... Uh, I do I do well for myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do well for myself. But said, yeah. but the bottom line was, Kev got the game early about mm. hard ticket sales over club. Because mm. I really come from hustling. Yeah, mm -hmm. when you really come from hustling, like I got to flip a dollar. I got to flip a dollar, man. Like another thing, you know, with all due respect, Gil, you know who. Came in the game and said, I'ma jug it out in just Nike tech suits. Mm -hmm. Who started that? With all due respect. Teched it all Every day. Out. Every, Every day. day I had on Nike tech suits. Every day. I had like three gray and three black because I read this book where this dude was saying, I don't wake up in the morning and think about I what I'm worry about about that. It saved my time. I'm either gonna wear gray or black. Mm-hmm. And Mark uh, Mark uh Zuckerberg I did a, I did, a bi I did like a did a billion dollars in tech suits. I'm just playing. I never <laughs> <laughs> he, he turned it up in Nike Tech, tech. and, and yeah. the reality of it is, you turned it up in Adidas sweatpants. Yeah, you came home thing. from jail when every fucking day, I knew what I was for four wear. Black years straight, little two dollar black Adidas sweatpants every day, every yeah. day with the black seed on. Yeah, <laughs> hey, uh, yes, you down, yes sir. And every day because it was about like just getting focused, man. About hustling, that's it. We hustling and. I want to make I want to make the money. I don't want the money that just come right now. I want to build it. I want to make the money that's gonna come, you know, forever. I want to be able to hand my legacy down to my children. Like that's what, like I never sold my catalog. Mm. I never did none of those things. You know why? Because I never had to. I never had to, and I ain't saying that to shake my dick in nobody's face or nothing. I never had to though. Mm. Talk heavy. Mm. Like I, I do well for myself. They, offer, they, did they come at you though? Of course. I've been off of stupid money for That's it. Kevin Gates, man. Mm -hmm. I've been off of stupid money. But that's intellectual property. It's like real estate. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, did, I didn't make those type of decisions because I never had to. I don't live beyond my means. I live below my means. Because I'm not... When, the more depressed or the more psychologically unfit you are, the more you spend money on entertainment and the more you spend money on vices. I don't spend money on vices and things of that nature. I can go work out and feel good and put on some sweats and feel like, you know, a billion dollars. Mm. Mm. I got, I got land. I grow my own food. I got. I heard goats. I heard camels. I heard cattle. Got a meat processing plant. I'm a country boy. I go fishing, hunting. I do things like that. Mm. <laughs> just got some more land. Ain't nothing wrong with that. The lake, that old farm. With the river. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know?
Yeah, man, we want to congratulate you, man, because I seen your journey, bro. Mm -hmm. I seen you come up. I, I watched it. I, I admired it, and I said, uh, "He, him, yes, sir. That's him right there." I always told you that. Yeah, that's, that's my only. That's my only thing, though. I, I never thought I would speak on it, but I don't know. thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Like, I needed to. I needed to release that. That's something that I held on for a long time that I never spoke on. I needed that. This was healing. This was therapy for me mm -hmm. today. So thank you all. That's man, always I didn't even think that it was going to go like this. Mm. <laughs> I did not. Well, shit. I, need, I needed this today, you. though, because I feel, like, clear now. Yeah. I feel lighter now that I got that off my chest. Yeah. It's real. Well, the album. Well, make ceremony. Sure all, huh? Ceremony. Make sure y'all download it, stream it, purchase it. TikTok, it, please. Instagram. I need, I, I need all the support I could get. Everything. That's, Watch it on YouTube. Watch the all the uh, cover everything. art videos. Yeah, everything. I need, I need it. Get everything. Everything. Kev, man, we appreciate always. you. Always. Just Thank for you. being you, brother. Him. When the album Him coming? The, uh, it came out 2019. Oh, it did. Yeah, it been. I've been him. Oh. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I've been him. <laughs> I've been him. <laughs> I've been saying that since 2000. And, uh, <laughs> 2008. Yeah, I am H I M. His mm -hmm. Imperial Majesty Ben Shrive, a big time of breadwinner anatomy. Mm -hmm. Like, not everybody's him now. <laughs> Himothy. <laughs> it's, it's, become, it's become a trend. That's Hemi Butler. It's just <laughs> like that, right? <laughs>